Darren Rizzi is the Saints special teams coordinator. We figured let's start strategizing of how we can take advantage of this new kickoff here. So, Darren, thanks for joining us. Before I get to the new kickoff, did the Saints practice kickoff returns during the season, even though we rarely had kickoff returns? Yeah, the interesting part, Dan, is that actually we practice, most of the coordinators practice uh, very similar to the way the new rule sets up. You know, very rarely do you ever practice a full field cover, you know, in practice. So we actually do a condensed version under the old rules. And so, yeah, we did. You know, we practice uh, in, a, in a normal game week. Uh, typically, we would practice on Wednesday and Thursday. And, and quite frankly, the amount of reps we would take would pretty much depend on how we thought the game or the opponent, if they were a big touchback team or if they were a team, maybe we were playing outdoors. So it really depended on the individual week. All right. Help us understand how you would strategize taking advantage of the new kickoff rule formations. Well, I, I think the first thing is that it, one of the things that's probably not out there as clear as it should be is that there's actually some restrictions to the kickoff formation and the kickoff return formation. So we really wanted to have it look like a clean play. And so what I mean by that is you can't overload one side on either side of it. And so there are some you know restrictions to the formations. So it's a little bit hard to get too creative. I think the one, the largest discussion we had as special teams coaches was actually the kickoff itself. So uh, right now the hang times are relevant under the new rule. So you might see some teams like, you know, we play indoors. You have a lot of teams that don't have to deal with the weather. You might see some creative kicks early on. Um, when I say that, I mean, some maybe some, some line drives or some balls to maybe try to get uh, the returners that are hard to field. Now, one of the parts of our rule that makes that a little bit easier is that we have two returners back. Unlike the XFL, they only had one, and that was a big part of the rule. Um, but I think one way that the coaches could potentially try to take advantage of the rules early is to be creative with the actual kick types, if you will. What you're saying is there's more strategy for the kickoff team in how they're going to kick as opposed to the return team. Correct. Now, I do think we we enabled the return team to have more creativity by our formation rules, and that's one of the biggest differences. I know everybody's comparing it right now to the XFL because of the condensed version, um, but we we allowed for much more creativity. But I do think you'll see a little bit of a cat and mouse and a little bit of a chess match, especially early on when people are trying to tinker and figure out the best ways to figure out the rules. Can you fair catch in any scenario? No. And so under this under this new rule, there's no fair catch. So if the ball lands in that landing zone between the goal line and the 20, it has to be returned. I love that. I mean, well, let me ask you, what do you think about the new kickoff? I, I'm, I'm a big fan. I, I got to be honest with you. I'm probably like most you know fans uh, when I first saw the XFL kickoff a few years ago. I hated it, quite frankly. Um, and then you start to you know, kind of do a deep dive and say, okay, let, let's look at that version. Let's see if we can make that version better. Uh, listen, I, I, the two things that I love the most about it, number one, it's a lot, lot safer for the players. We've taken the big collisions, the high-speed collisions out of the play. And number two, we revived a dying play. I mean, this 21% return rate, you know, we, we lost over 2,000 plays last year uh, to touchbacks and the fair catches. And so I think it brings a, a play – uh, that people really weren't even watching back to be a lot more interesting. And uh, I think it makes it a lot more exciting for the fans. So that I, I like it. I think it, uh, I think it really is going to bring some excitement back to the game. Yeah. It's kind of like the extra point that it was a foregone conclusion. Now all of a sudden it became interesting. I, has there been any talk of how to make the punt return safer? Cause there's a lot of, you know, you've got a lot of violent collisions in that. That's probably the second most dangerous play aside from the kickoff yeah dan so after every year uh since i guess the last eight years i've been on the part of this uh, special team subcommittee we look at actually all the injury data and and you're right there are the punt play uh the injuries are have been different if you will on punt and kickoff but the injury rates are are similar and so on the punt play on these long runs you're getting guys with hamstrings and lower body extremities where where the concern on the kickoffs was really more from the from the neck up and, and some of the head injuries. So yeah, there's been a lot of ways. Um, there's been a lot of talk about uh, the punt play as well. And, and that it's, it's really a work in progress. We try to make tweaks every year to make the play a little bit safer. We're talking to uh, Darren Rizzi. He's the Saints special teams coordinator. 
How do you know somebody's going to be good on the kickoff team as far as going down there and tackling? Well, I, I think, you know, the, uh, under the old rule, it was one of those things where you really wanted to get guys that were fast down the field and had that had the ability to get down the field, you know, while the ball's in the air in the hang time. I think what you'll see under the new rule, Dan, is I think you'll see some people kind of playing with their personnel a little bit. You might actually see some guys on the kickoff team that maybe under the old rule didn't play, or maybe there's some teams, there's, you know, three, four defenses might have some bigger players, some outside linebackers, some defensive ends. You might start to see some of those guys trickle in a little bit because of the close quarters, you know, of, of the play. And so, um, listen, I, I, the, one of the biggest things for us is is the ability to avoid and then obviously the ability to get guys on the ground. So, you, you know, most of the time you see primarily defensive players, but now you might see some offensive guys kind of trickle in there as well. The status of the onside kick is what? Well, the surprise onside kick is is out, right? So there's no there's no way you can surprise onside kick under this model. But I think the one thing that everybody needs to understand is there was only two surprise onside kicks last year in the league. Uh, teams were 0 for 2. In the last five years, I think there was 15, if I'm not mistaken, uh, and and the, the stats were 2 for 15. When we changed the rules back in 2018, we, we made it very, very difficult to, to recover a surprise onside. So – the onside at the end of the game, the way the rule reads right now is if you go into the fourth quarter and you are trailing and you want to try to get the ball back, simply you tell the officials we're going to you declare an onside kick. You go back now to the old rules, the old formation, and we're back to a regular onside kick as the fans would know it, a quote-unquote normal onside kick. You could draft anyone all time to be your kick returner. Who would it be? I, I got to go with him. Hester. I got to I go. I go. I go. Hester one, and, I, and listen. Cordell Patterson is a guy that the Steelers signed yesterday. If those were my two guys back in this model, we'd be we'd be just fine. I, I've had a chance to coach against both those guys. They're both outstanding. Uh, I would probably have to give Devin a little bit of a tick, but man, Cordell's really good too. And you know, with the kickoff rules, Hester never would have become a Hall of Fame player. You know that that. You're talking about under the old rules yeah, here, yeah. Without, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think it, I think it's kind of ironic that in the year that he's going into the Hall of Fame, <laughs> yeah. we're we're <laughs> we're getting this play back to it. You know, I, I think the fans probably you, you forget as late as 2010, there was an 80 percent return rate, and we've completely flipped that over the course of the last decade or so. Where now we're we're 80 percent touchback or fair catch, and so that's what that's the whole goal of this play, Dan, was to get this play back and. You know, we made a little tweak there at the end. There were some coaches that felt like that 35-yard touchback was a little bit too punitive. And so for this first year, we're going to make that touchback to 30. I think that'll knock some of the plays off. But, you know, I said yesterday, if, if we had 2,000 non-plays last year, even if we get a 50% return rate, sure. we're going to we're going to infuse and, and add another 1,000 plays into the season. I think I think that's great for everybody, coaches, players, fans, everybody. I remember talking to Tony Dungy about when he was in the Super Bowl and deciding if they were going to kick to Devin Hester. And he said, we're not kicking to him. We are not going to kick to him. Then they decided at the last minute <laughs> they were going to kick to him, and he returns the opening kickoff back. It's got to be one of those where, you know, do you get yelled at? How often would you get yelled at if somebody <laughs> returned a kick uh, you know, against your special teams? I think some of the fans would probably love to hear those audios of, of special teams coaches getting yelled at. Yeah, I, oh, I've been yelled at plenty of times, no question. I've been doing this for – I've been coaching now 30 years, uh, you know, 16 college, 15 NFL, and I've been yelled at my fair share of times. Uh, and so, listen, it happens. And uh, and that's going to be kind of the, one of the unique things about the strategy, I think. At the end of games, in those close games, what do I do? Do I give them the ball to 30? Or do I try to kick it down there in the landing zone and go tackle? And so I think that'll, that'll be a little bit of, of a unique, you know, thing for the fans. But I, but I think it 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 makes for you know must see TV where you, where you knew this past year, well, they're just going to kick a touchback, and you know the Super Bowl is the best example. You know, there's 13 touchbacks. Where now it's okay. How what's the coach going to do? Is he going to opt to give them the ball and a 30, or are they going to go try to cover and and pin it back? So it adds a little bit more strategy to it. Darren, thank you for your time. Thanks for the insights. We appreciate it. Dan, yeah, thanks for having me. I really appreciate you. Thank you so much. Darren Rizzi, Saints Special Teams Coordinator. Yeah, the gamesmanship. It'll be interesting to see how certain teams take advantage of this. Do you change your draft? Do you go after certain players? Are certain guys that Darren talked about normally not on the kickoff team, but now with the close proximity, 
maybe you want a different style body type uh, up close there.